Hello everyone and welcome to another Game Reverse Engine devlog video. So let's just go over some quick stats about this project. So we've only worked on it for nine days. Uh, each day has been around 4.5 hours. So that's about 40 hours in total. And it's all 100% streamed so you can catch every minute of it and see exactly what's gone on uh, throughout the pro process of this, this project. And it runs on Linux and Windows. So there is a VOD channel which I'll leave links to in the description and talk about more later but other than streaming on twitch or after they get streaming on twitch they will go into this vod channel and you can cat catch specifically like a point where i made this feature or, or see some more more uh more details about what's gone on under the hood um so let's get into the big update so the gpu api is now complete so this is our little test thing that we render but effectively from here we will we'll be able to do all of our graphics and rendering R&D work just using the features that we're about to show. So what are the GPU API features that we have? So simply we can create buffers and textures on the GPU which will allow us to store data on the GPU and get it to run, uh, like have this data be manipulated by, by the GPU and, and uh, you know, you take advantage of textures which effectively um, have everything cached efficiently for reading two-dimensional or three-dimensional images, that sort of thing. Then we can also upload data to the GPU. So we can upload data that's been made by the CPU or assets that are simply on disk. We also have the ability to read data back from the GPU. And this is gonna allow us to read back maybe a, a screenshot or GIFs or make GIFs out of reading several frames of sc screenshots or maybe we can actually just make a video right directly in the game. We'll still have to code this feature on top of this GPU API but the readback data allows for these features and also we can read back just data that's been computed by the GPU because the GPU might be more efficient at computing that data so an example is maybe we do procedural maybe we do something that's procedurally generated on the GPU and then just read that back for the CPU to actually use. Um, and obviously the final feature which actually does all the logic is we can we can actually launch compute shaders on the GPU and manipulate all this data that's stored on there. So what is this GPU API? How is it architected? So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have some graphics code for the game. So there'll be a, there'll be a graphics subsystem and it's going to call into this GPU subsystem. So there's GPU.h, and this is where the API lives, and there's an implementation file for this. And then there is a header file for the, the GPU backend. So we've abstracted, we have like this, this more like lower level API where each, back, each backend can implement this API. So it make it easier to port to other platforms. So we have this, an implementation file for the, the Vulkan backend somewhere around 2000 lines of code right now um, and it shouldn't probably change too much from that but it implements all the features we've just gone over so it's it's full compute and there's no traditional triangle rasterizer api in there at all just um just for using compute and and uh, creating buffers and be able to upload to the memory back from them uh, so let's just quickly break down this frame that we're, we're we are rendering and and uh what sort of tests we've got. So we're simply just rendering one compute shader for the background. And this one is very basic with, you know, the, the, we're taking the, we're, we're, we're launching enough compute shaders to write to every pixel in the, for the screen texture. And we're simply just, you know, like the, the X coordinate of the pixel goes into the red channel. So the further to the right, it goes, the more red it gets. And then the, the Y channel coordinate goes into the, the the green channel, so the more the further down it gets, the more green it gets, right? So it's just a simple gradient. Very simple shader. So we've got three compute shaders in total. So after that, compute shader two will launch. So we've got some synchronization code in here to make sure that one runs after the other one. Because uh, you have to do that in these new graphics APIs. And you might be thinking, why is there a triangle here? Aren't you only using compute? Well, someone on stream like said they missed triangles. So, as as a bit of fun, I just used a, a sign distance field function, which is probably a bit overkill. 
um, in like thinking about it, but it's just the way we've done it. And we found a bug in the compiler. So we went in and fixed that bug in the compiler as well. Um, so it, it, was, it, was all, it was all worth it in the end. So just just an example, we just use one of um, these sign distance functions from, from, from this block here. And it just effectively gives you the distance to the edge of the triangle. And rendering this, you could like, this renders like a perfect triangle, but you can also use it to like subtract shapes from other shapes because it's a sign distance field, or you can use it to like, you can also like make the shape bigger and it becomes more rounded. Um, so there's lots of interesting stuff you can do with sign distance fields. Uh, we're not going to probably explore too much of it, of these with this project. Um, but yeah, just uh, an interesting side note to this compute shader too. So just it just tests more of the, the shader compiler you see as well. Um, and then comp compute shader three is simply testing the fact that we can upload an image to the GPU, it's going to live on the GPU persistently, right? It just lives there, and we just can render it every frame. And so it's just our logo. And simply, I, I just cut out the background um, based on how how close the the color is to black, and then it just gets rid of it. So it, look, it looks transparent basically, but it just discards it. Um, so yeah, that's that's about that one. But also, if you zoom a little bit further out, what Compute Shader Three also does is it prints out to the terminal. So you might be thinking, how does it do this and how how did you achieve this? Well, part of part of my shader compiler allows us to print strings out in, or, or take a string and print it out into a buffer. So we have our readback buffer and essentially we have a printf function that we, that we have that's implemented on the GPU. And all it does is it copies the string, puts it into the readback buffer and then we put in the arguments into the buffer and then the CPU picks it up and then it will do a formatted print into the actual console. So this allows us to get full on printf working work like to print out values that came from the GPU. So we can actually debug and see the exact value that's been computed on the GPU, which is something you don't actually have in these in, in graphics APIs like at all. I think they've started to add it in in some Spear V version, but it's not as good as this. Um, so this is going to be super helpful when we do our graphics R&D because we can actually see the exact values that go on. Um, so I'm super happy about this feature as well. So what features are up next in this project? So we're, we're just about to work on virtual memory, custom memory allocators, because we just started on the, on the graphics because it was the most complicated thing that I wanted to do in a very simple way. And so now that I've achieved that, I can now like just do more of the engine part. So we're going to come in and and do more of what the, the core engine stuff. So virtual memory, custom memory allocators. Uh, we want like a stack implementation so we can have like some array that grows and shrinks. Uh, and then we want to also have a hash table and object pool because uh, these are also some two two collections that I really like. Then after that, we want to have some keyboard input and also support some form of gamepad. So, because you know, it'd be great to use the keyboard, but also if I'm doing some some R and D work, it might might just be nicer to use like a gamepad, just to be more comfortable to sort of switch from a keyboard using a keyboard all the time, just to using a gamepad and have a bit of a play. Um, and then after we've got these things in, I would consider the core engine part uh, basically ready. And all I need is some form of custom UI so we can sort of tweak some values on the fly, or or just, just build some UI that will help us debug like what's going on with this graphics R&D. And then finally, we can get to this graphics R&D and really play, try and find some unique sort of style that we can uh, use for this game, right? Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to get any like access to the source code, you can uh, support via Twitch, or you can also support via Ko-Fi. Uh, it's it's better if you support via Ko-Fi for me if you want to support support me more. But if you if you like the whole Twitch sort of features where you get the emotes and uh, stuff like this, you can also support via there and just get those. It doesn't matter so much. Uh, but after you support via those, you can join the Discord. There's a little secret channel you'll get access to, and then you'll be able to get access to 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 the GitLab and download the code and take a look for it and see how that works. You can also get it compiling on your machine and have a bit of a play. 
Um, and also we stream on Twitch Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. If you if you check out the the channel, you'll see the exact schedule in your time zone. Uh, we can come and hang out and uh, see what we do live, but also ask some questions that are on topic. Um, and there's obviously the VOD channel where you can check out the streams, the like earlier streams, and maybe have a bit of a catch up of, on what's going on, or just just see some details if you're more interested. And there's also a channel on. There's also a whole Discord where you can come and just chat about like programming in general or ask more off topic questions or maybe longer form questions that, that are not really suited to streaming, uh, to, to the streaming platform at all. Right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And uh, yeah, good to see you. Bye.